building 30 pounds of muscle. That is the difference you can see between these two pictures. I am not gonna sell you the idea that this can be achieved in a few months, because the truth is it took me many years. The secret in achieving high levels of muscle growth is time. We are talking about a nine year difference here. In a world where everyone wants things fast and now, you can distinguish yourself and get above average results if you're willing to put in the time. Most people chase these 30 or 60 day transformation challenges thinking they can completely transform their body. While you may be able to lose some fat, you will not build much muscle in a short time frame. If you are ready to take your muscle growth goals seriously, then you are watching the right video. Because I will provide the information you need to realize your natural muscular potential. This comes from a person that had to learn muscle growth principles the hard way. Growing up, I was not that athletic. In fact, I was quite under-muscled, like you can see in this picture next to me. In an effort to build more muscle, I started lifting and eating more. I actually ate a lot more and took things too far, which made me gain excessive fat. Eventually, I was able to get the fat off and then continue my muscle growth process in a more sustainable way. But if there is one thing I learned in the past 10 years, it is that you cannot cheat your body to gain muscle fast. Trying to gain over 10 pounds in a couple of months will simply make you fat, no matter how hard you train. If we look at the scientific research, most natural trainees have the capacity to gain between 25 to 40 pounds of pure muscle mass in their entire lifting career. This study included high-level natural bodybuilders that have been training for well over a decade. So it puts in perspective why the muscle growth process should be viewed in years, not months. Now the encouraging part is that you typically make the fastest progress in the beginning. In one 2005 study, after three months of consistent training, beginner trainees gained an average of two inches to their biceps. In another study, when beginner trainees trained four times per week and had a high protein intake, they were able to gain eight pounds of lean body mass in three months. So if you have not gained much muscle in your fitness journey yet, you have a lot of potential for muscle growth in this upcoming period. Especially once you apply the science-based training and nutrition principles discussed in today's video. Because you see, muscle growth typically happens in spurts. The first and biggest growth spurt happens in your initial 6-12 to 12 months of training. I went from only benching the bar to benching a full 20kg plate in my first 6 months of training. But after these 6 months, I got stuck at benching one plate. Fast forward a couple of months later, I had a new growth spurt. I then went from bench pressing 60kg to 75kg in the following 6 months, and further developed the chest muscles before hitting another plateau. I see this phenomenon often in my practice as an online coach. You have a good couple of months of progress, followed by a period of slow progress before the next growth spurt begins again. Obviously, to gain a good amount of muscle, we want to maximize the amount of time spent in the growth spurt. Because the thing is, a growth spurt does not happen on accident. Typically, this is the time when you have good energy in the gym because your sleep is good and perhaps overall stress is lower. You also do not miss workouts, so you build up momentum in your routine. Next to that, a growth spurt also often happens when you consume good calories and have your protein intake at an adequate level. Essentially, we can design these muscle growth spurts. There are six main variables we need to consider whenever you plan on having your next growth spurt. These are the same variables that can also cause a muscle growth plateau if not handled correctly. First, we got training volume. With how many sets you train each muscle group per week is one of the most important considerations for muscle growth. Research indicates that training each major muscle group with between 10 to 20 sets per week is recommended. When you are a beginner trainee, you may train each muscle group with about 10 sets per week and make great progress. I shared a 3-day full body routine a couple of years back that helps you train each major muscle group with 10 sets per week. After your first 6 months of training though, you may find that this 3-day routine doesn't produce the progress it used to back in the day. A reason could be that doing only 10 sets per week is no longer enough for you to stimulate new muscle growth. Research suggests that the more advanced you are in training, the more volume you need to build muscle. So to take a next step in your training, you may have to increase your volume per muscle group to 12 or 13 sets per week. Keep this in mind whenever you reach a training plateau. Could you do more high quality sets and would you be able to tolerate these sets from a recovery point of view? If the answer is yes, you benefit from increasing your training volume to head into a new growth spurt. The second variable is your training intensity. The longer we train, the more comfortable we get with the weights we're lifting. Are you actually still pushing yourself in your training sessions as the sets progress? Are you still as focused on your fourth exercise of the day as compared to the first exercise? These are useful questions to check with yourself. In one study, recreational trainees were found to sometimes leave six or more repetitions in reserve at the end of each set when researchers observed their training performance. This is a problem because we know from other research that the last few repetitions before reaching muscle failure are the most important repetitions for muscle growth. These last few repetitions are also known as the effective reps. So if you want to create a new growth spurt, make sure that you keep no more than one to two repetitions in reserve at the end of each set. 
Also, test your maximum strength at times by performing AMREPs in your training every three to four weeks. This helps you get a better idea of where your actual strength limits are. The third variable is maintaining a small calorie surplus. Always chasing fat loss is probably the biggest variable holding people back in achieving their muscle growth goals. Many people are perma cutting, always in a calorie deficit, which by definition is not the optimal environment for muscle growth. As supported by research, the best environment for muscle growth is when you maintain about a 10% calorie surplus. So let's say you maintain your weight at 2200 calories per day. You would create a more supportive environment for muscle growth if you would consume 2400 calories on a daily basis. This is why I am a big fan of having one proper fat loss phase at the beginning of your fitness journey to get rid of the excess body fat. After that, spend most of your time in a lean bulk with a slow rate of weight gain to build lean muscle while minimizing fat gain. Whenever you have a mini cut to get rid of some of the body fat you may have gained during the long lean bulking process, you can focus on maintaining your strength. This can be considered that in-between period in which you maintain your strength before the next growth spurt begins. As a rule of thumb, for every month you spend in a calorie deficit, spend at least two months in that year in a lean bulk. This ensures you have a strong environment for muscle growth. But I would only recommend maintaining such a lean bulk after having that first longer successful fat loss phase. Next to calories, we also need adequate protein in your nutrition. Slacking on your protein is another reason why you may reach a muscle growth plateau. As supported by research, aim to have at least 0.7 grams per pound of your goal body weight in protein. Spread this protein intake over between 3 to 6 meals per day. More recent research shows that having your protein intake somewhat distributed throughout the day results in more muscle growth than just having a couple of daily high protein feedings. The fifth variable is keeping good form during the performance of your exercises. The absolute worst way to cut a growth spurt short is by having an injury due to bad exercise technique. I don't care how much weight you are lifting, neither do the people at the gym. We do not care. You will be remembered for how you took care of your family and how you treated the people around you, not for how much you can bench. So skip the ego lifting, it increases your chances of getting hurt and you also do not stimulate your muscles that well. To get the full benefits of an exercise, we want to progressively overload the movement with proper technique. This is why you see me often posting form videos on my Instagram page, I want to help you get your technique right. The sixth and last variable is your recovery, specifically looking at sleep and stress management. People underestimate how much stress can impact your muscle gains. One study by the University of Texas found that during the exams period of students, their muscles took twice as long to fully recover after a workout. Poor sleep management also negatively impacts performance. If I look back at my progress, when I was struggling the most with my training is when I didn't make it a priority. I was perhaps getting only 5-6 to six hours of sleep and when I was training, I would be on my phone thinking about my business or answering emails. If you want to head into your next growth spurt, make sure your recovery is a priority. I am not here to judge and I am not perfect at this either. We are ambitious and passionate people. This comes with some stress and a day of bad sleep can occur at times. But we do not want to make high stress and poor sleep a habit. This directly impacts your gains. If you get these six variables right that we just discussed, you will notice that throughout the years you will spend most of your time in training, progressing and in the growth process. Give yourself realistically at least two years with this level of focus. And you will have an amazing foundation of muscle for the rest of your life. Paying more attention to these six variables is also what has helped me really level up my muscle growth in the past two to three years. The progress is slow and steady, especially if you already have some experience. Always keep in mind though that the small progress steps add up to big progress over time. If you would like my advice and consult with me personally when it comes to your fitness goals, apply to my one-on-one -on -one online coaching service. I will design your training and nutrition approach while holding you accountable throughout the process. You can apply through the link in my description. And that was all for today's video. If you found this video helpful then definitely leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next one.